Thanks for tuning in. I'm Donnie. A couple of weeks ago, I decided to total up how much I spent on racing in the 2020 race season, and I thought it might be an interesting video topic to share with you. I did 13 races in the 2020 season. I raced one CXC hair scramble. I raced three Sarah Sprint Enduro races, and I did all nine Seca hair scrambles. Now, I'm definitely not a penny pincher when it comes to racing. Uh, there are things I could have spent less on, and there are things I probably could have spent more on. So this is just an overview of what I spent during the race season. Obviously, this is going to be different for everybody. So there are some things that I'm not including, like the cost of the bike, um, because I would have the bike and I'd be riding whether I was racing or not, and the cost of meals and snacks and things like that on race day, because I'd be eating on that day whether or not I'm racing. So there are a few things I'm not including, and there are probably some things I'm forgetting. But overall, I'm going to try to cover all the costs. So with that, let's jump right into my list of expenses for the 2020 race season. So let's start off with memberships and entry fees. I purchased a Sarah membership for $25, and I thought I was gonna be able to race five Sarah races during the year, and that $25 would get me into the points races. Turned out I only could race three races with Sarah during 2020, so uh, I probably could have saved a little bit of money there by doing the daily passes, but anyway, $25 for the Sarah pass. Sarah requires an AMA membership, so I bought the family AMA plan. Uh, again, kind of thinking I would race more of those races, and I thought Chase might race as well, so that's why I bought the family plan, and that was $98. The Sarah entry fee is $45 if you sign up online ahead of time, which I did, and I raced three of those races at $45, so that's $135 on Sarah entry fees. I raced one CXC race in McEwen, Tennessee back in August, and I bought a $5 one-day pass for CXC. Uh, the race fee for that CXC race was $40, and I needed to buy a transponder because my transponder for Seca and for Sarah would not work with the system for CXC. So I bought a $10 transponder with CXC. My annual Seca membership is $35. Seca entry fees are $35, and I did all nine races, so that's $315 in Seca entry fees. All of these races have a $10 gate fee, and with 13 races, that was $130. So that wraps up the membership fees and entry fees, so now we'll move on to gas and oil. On average, I spend about $50 for gas in my truck per race. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less, but $50 is a good average there. So with 13 races, I've spent $650 on gas in my truck. I typically use about two gallons of gas in my bike during the race. So multiply that times 13 races, and that's 26 gallons of gas I've bought for my bike. So that's about $65 worth of gas for the bike. I mix the oil at 60 to one, so for 26 gallons of gas, I use approximately 0.43 gallons of oil. I'll round up to a half a gallon and say that's roughly $28 worth of premix oil. I changed my crankcase oil five times during the race season, and at $15 a pop, that's roughly $75 in crankcase oil. I do that about every 15 to 20 hours, and some people say that you should do it more often, but um, that seems to be about right for me because most of the time when I drain the oil out, it looks very similar to the oil I'm putting back in. It's only lubricating the clutch and the transmission in my bike. There's no contamination from combustion, so that interval seems to work out pretty well for me. I spent about $50 on air filter cleaner and air filter oil. So that wraps up gas and oil. Now let's move on to parts. Now I did do a top end on the bike during the race season. I went ahead and serviced the power valve as well as replacing the piston and rings. So uh, the piston and ring gasket kit and the entire kit for the top end was $220. My cylinder had a little over 200 hours on it, so I went ahead and had it replated and that was $250. I replaced front brake pads twice during the race season and I replaced my rear brake pads four times during the race season. I typically run Neutron brake pads and those are very economical, but at one point I needed a new insulator on my rear brake, so I did have to buy the Brembo kit to do the rear brakes on the last time. So that's a little higher cost than, uh, than it might normally be. And I spent $110 on brake pads. I did some pretty significant damage to my pipe at a crash at Miller Creek. And I'll insert video of that crash here. <laughs> I replaced it with a new Pro Circuit Platinum pipe and that was $225. I went through two front tires this race season and that was $155. And between changing those tires, I put in a new ultra heavy tube in the front. So that was an additional $30. I also went through two rear tires and that was $167. I used tubeless in the rear so there was no additional expense for tubes or anything. And that wraps up the list of parts that I bought during the race season. 
I spent about $120 in goggle lenses and tear-offs during the season, and I probably spend more on goggle lenses than most people, but I like to keep those things clear. And then gloves and gear. I bought a few pairs of gloves during the race season, and I also had primarily one pair of climb gear that I wore for most races, and I pretty much wore out that gear um, during the races, so $190 for gloves and gear. So there it is. I spent $3,128 in the 2020 race season. Let me know down in the comments if you thought it'd be more or less than that. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.